Well guys, I had said I wasn't gonna get any more 200 amp hour batteries, but I liked Oakmo's other battery and they sent this one. This is the highest amount of watt hours I've ever seen from a 200 amp hour battery. So I'm glad I said yes. I have something else coming in the mail too. I got a 50 watt Renogy solar panel in the mail. Or it should be coming, it should be arriving at any moment. And that's going to be to extend and expand our apartment solar panel system. So I'm really excited for that. You may also notice I did some upgrades to my battery cart. This battery cart was a really good decision to build because it fits two five gallon buckets. Now that means I haven't been able to keep it very pristine because I've used it for work a lot, but I've added two handles. So when going up steps, to our 1930s apartment, I can pick it up without having to bend over. We'll see how that works though. Well, that's funny. Right then and there, as I lifted it up, it decided to pop the wheel off. That was unexpected. The nail must have come out. This wheel fit came off. I suppose you can't have any uh, progress without some failure in the way. This took a while to come in. It didn't come in until after dark, but it's here. This was only $25 free shipping. I think Renogy has stopped making smaller panels or something. Let's see, we get 2.9 amps max, 50 watts. I think that would be a good size for our window. Not to be vertical in the window, but to come out on some extruded aluminum arms. And so far we have a 30 watt Renogy panel. This 30 watt Renogy panel, which I like a lot because, oh, it actually has snow on it. I like a lot because it actually has a black frame. Well, they, they also don't make this one anymore as well. I believe this one is 21.5% efficient and the other one is as well. I think some of the newer, bigger panels are more like 22% or 22.7% efficient, if that helps. With the 30 watt panel and the particular spot that we're in, we get about 160 watt hours of electricity in the summer. And we get about 120, 110 watt hours of electricity in the winter. Now I could fix that by rotating it. I think that would be a good idea. In the summer, I want this panel to be connected to our air conditioner. In the winter, the same frame will just be there without the air conditioner. And with a 50 watt panel, plus a 30 watt panel. I can extrapolate that out to something like 400 watt hours per day. Now we're gonna talk about gaming. So if this setup can make 400 watt hours on a good day, maybe a little bit more, then we're already to a point where while gaming, we can get about two hours of gameplay. I'm not running Final Fantasy 14. Final Fantasy 14 runs at a solid 340 or so watts. This one is doing 200 to 300, so let's say 250. This is farthest frontier. It's not super happy with it, but I got it with a Steam gift card, and um, so at least I didn't have to buy it. It, it. it wants to be an Anno 1602 or 1503 variant, but if, if you're not German or Swiss or Swedish, I don't think you can make this kind of game because this was made by an American company and it kind of shows it's just odd and um, there's not quite that polish and there's not that good like world building that I expect from a lot of these types of games, but oh well. It does use a little bit less power though. In the future, I might want to upgrade to an Intel Nuke. Now, unfortunately, this Intel Nuke is exactly the same as my Optiplex, basically a computer from 10 years ago. And actually, yeah, 11 years ago for the Dell. i7-4790K, not overclocked, with an RTX 2060 12 gigabyte model. And I could increase the efficiency a little bit more by going back down to one power supply. Right now I have two power supplies, so that's an extra seven watts of power draw, but we did improve one thing. I took some Christmas money and I went to Walmart and bought the American version 
of the Dubai lamp. And so these lights are proving really efficient. I know it's a tiny amount of power. However, we had some, I think they were Eco Smart bulbs from Home Depot that were going really bad. They were taking like 15 watts, 20 watts sometimes, getting way too hot. Um, the, the ICs on the circuit board for those lamps were starting to turn white because they were oxidizing. It gets so hot. And uh, with these, it's only doing about four and a half watts of power, which is pretty good. So that's a good 10 watts taken away. Well, five to 10 watts, something along those lines. And now the inverter is actually quite good as well. This Vertimax from Windy Nation, I bought this back in like 2016, 2017. It is very efficient with conversion from DC to pure sine wave. Of course, a better option would be 48 volts, but oh well. As for the power, I believe this is a fairly efficient inverter. I know it has a very low power draw whenever it's not plugged into anything. It's only like four and a half watts. We only have the bulb and the TV in idle mode. This monitor takes about 15 watts of power. My computer natively takes about 45 watts of power, but with the graphics card, it takes quite a bit more. I think for this panel, I am not going to be cutting off the, what was it, the um, MC4 or whatever connectors. I always have to cut them off because I ran into an issue where for years, no interoperability could be found with these. Uh, I said that weird, but oh well. I just had my my COVID booster shot, so I'm feeling weird. I would buy, say, a Renergy panel and a cable from someone else, and they won't operate with, with each other. They all have subtle differences, so they can't be used interchangeably, which defeats the entire purpose. But hopefully these will work with that, and I can charge things individually with it. That'd be kind of cool. So guys, it's this is actually the last clip I've filmed for this video because I just haven't had a good time to test the solar panel. Mostly because the um, portable power station I've been working with, I've added this circuit that takes off of the internal 16 volt battery and the internal thing that takes in the charging with the MPPT and stuff like that, well, it has this um, like dead reckoning to it. It doesn't look at the voltage of the battery. Once it thinks it's 100%, it will never accept more charge. So I have to fully discharge it. And then, so I, actually, I could not get the power into this. And I have this power connector, which goes from the um, oh, MC4 connectors, I think. and goes to the um, XT60 connectors. Now, I've actually tried to avoid these connectors because for the longest time, anytime I bought these, none of them were interchangeable. They were all just slightly different enough. But look at that, that actually works. It kind of, it really made me upset because for years, instead of them being an actual standard, they were not a standard. Now, unfortunately, this is not going to be very good. I'm gonna zoom in on that. I'll take the camera. Yeah, not even taking anything yet. I'm going to hang out of the window. <laughs> like that. And we can, we can see. Of course, I'm only expecting maybe two or three watts, but. Um, Yeah, it's not even showing anything. Oh, one watt. Oh, well. <sighs> See, the weather is just, it's just too wintry. We only have a few hours of actual good sunlight. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to set this down here and forget about it until I build myself a nice, maybe 80-20 frame. Something like 
now back to the rest of the video. So the discharge was finished at 2,350 watt hours because I used a little bit more power. And so that's interesting to see the difference of the efficiency. Also, there's also a difference between each discharge on these batteries. It's just, I, I, I wonder if the history of the chemistry plays a part. But I don't have a nail on hand to fix the wheel. However, I impulse bought this wire stripper because I have so much single core wire, solid core wire. And so I actually just cut off a piece of this and that works perfectly for the time being anyway. So now we can go back to the workshop. Oh, and um, this didn't really work out too well. It's way too long. So I'm gonna see about making something different. This is actually a rope that I got when I was like nine years old. It's one of my first good ropes. And I initially cut this to the length to have two of these brackets. It would be like a U shape, but I can only find one of these brackets. So I was like, well, for the time being, I'll do that. Oh well. By the time I got back to the battery, well, the solar power system building, um, I had done this and this almost actually works. Yeah, so it's not the right geometry, but I'm kind of experimenting and it's something along those lines. Well, it's on to charge number three. Going at a nice pace as well, 200, 225 watts. Wow, guys, I just came over. This is done charging and it's time for the third discharge. This has been sitting for three days, balancing. So let's see how this goes. Well guys, it's been a few days. I've been really busy. We have 15, 60 watt hours, still at 12.9 volts while discharging. I was pulling about 250 or 300, but Beam and G keeps crashing. I find it interesting that my computer, well, it seems that it doesn't tend to want to use more than 11 gigabytes of the RAM. So is it showing that possibly the rest of the RAM is filled up and it's not shown on Task Manager? I could open Resource Monitor and find out, but oh well. Ooh, jittery graphics. Three one seven one hours, so not much time left. Well, that kind of sucked. Never mind. hit the sign. That's a good place to end it. Well, we're at 2449 watt hours. There is my pin. It's pretty good. And it started beeping, I turned everything off. So this was, I think pretty consistently, PC 250. That wasn't too far off from the first one. Now, I did go large amounts of time of just watching video. So that's like 150 watts, so it might have been more like PC 200. It's kind of hard to say, but we could have also probably had a really good charge level on this. Well, that's pretty much it. You know what's funny is I actually forgot to turn it off. It was taking that little bit of power and it did get up to 2450. Okay, I'll do the correction. 
now it's off. Now it's off. And to wrap up, it's back on the charger, but this is what I'm facing. So little power. It'll take a long time to charge. Thank you very much for sending this Okmo. It's the best battery I've reviewed yet. Highest capacity. Now I can finally not accept any more of these 200 amp hour batteries. And I can do a review of every 200 amp hour battery. I'm going to get to work on that. Hope you guys have a happy Solar Sunday. See ya.